Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today I want to talk about my five absolute favorite things about smart objects. If you've never used smart objects before, you're going to love this stuff. If you already use smart objects, maybe it'll just reaffirm what you already love about smart objects. But there's some good stuff here. So let's get into it. But actually, before we do, I want you to go over to my site. I've got a link here on uh, the, the screen here. I'm selling a couple courses over on tutvid.com. And one of them is a course all about advanced Photoshop features. And I think you might be interested in it. Plus, if you pick it up you support tutvid.com and help me continue to make these tutorials each and every day and that's super cool let's talk here about this smart object stuff first and foremost one of the things I love about smart objects is the ability to lock in pixel uh, pixel size and dimension so let's say I draw out this big sort of multifaceted star and it's just pixels it's not a path or vector shape like maybe we should but let's say this is a graphic that we got from somebody and this is what we're working with and uh, we scale it down because this client says hey I want to add a tattoo or something to my wrist and we scale it way down and we move it over to her wrist and then we set it to a blend mode of oh I don't know you know soft light or something uh, we could mess around with it obviously and make it actually look realistic but then they say you know what Ooh, I want to make that graphic and again this is a very easy to recreate graphic so we could recreate this but again hypothetically speaking this is something maybe we got from a graphic designer and we just can't recreate it scale it up I actually want to place that star on this door behind her so I'm just gonna enter into free transform commander control T and I would just scale this back up you know nice and large again and I can move it over to the door commit the change but you can see the obvious problem is we've lost all of our edge clarity it, it very obviously looks scaled I'm gonna undo this a bunch of times to take me back to my original shape one of the things you can do to protect yourself against this is by l locking in uh, the size of your shape with a smart object you can do that by just right clicking on the and choosing hey convert to smart object and there we go now we can scale this thing down until it is whoop, until it is microscopic commit that change come back a year later if if need be scale it right back I mean you can see here the width is telling us look we're a little bit bigger than it was before we're at 107 percent but it knows you know when we were down like this we were at like six percent and if we wanted to take it exactly back to where it was we could manually punch in 100 percent go ahead and commit the change and it's perfectly back to where it was with great crisp edge definition so that's cool I'm gonna get rid of that that's one amazing way to work with smart objects, especially if you're a graphic designer and you're scaling things up and down. Just lock in the original size of something with a smart object. You never have to worry about it then. Uh, next up, I'm going to go over to my finder and I'm going to drag a .ai file into this Photoshop document. Uh, this is just a little uh, illustration of BB-8 that I created for an upcoming tutorial, which should be kind of fun. And uh, let's say we drop it in Photoshop. You can see when you drag a, an Adobe Illustrator, and this goes for EPS as well, and I have an EPS file here. Uh, when you drag it into Photoshop, it automatically wraps it in a smart object. It just says, you know what, we're going to keep you nice and safe in here as a smart object. Now, because this is a .ai file, it's still referencing all those vector paths and everything in Photoshop. So we can actually take this and free transform it and make it huge if we want, and it's still going to be super clean crisp and sharp it doesn't get all blurry like you would expect when you zoom an image larger so we could just take this here set it to like color burn and we have kind of this cool overlay effect right and maybe move it over here or move it over here whatever we wanted to do we could do that and oh by the way at any time we can always double click on the icon uh, the thumbnail over here and jump over into illustrator to actually edit bb8 let's see if we uh, say if we wanted to make the orange blue or something like that which you know maybe is a little sacrilegious for those of you that that, uh, are our big uh, proficient uh, fanboys of the Star Wars franchise we would want to do that but the, the point is you have the option you could go and do that and it's really super easy and it's super cool so working with Adobe Illustrator files that's my number two favorite thing here about smart objects let's talk about replacing contents actually I'm gonna leave this smart object here I'm going to scale it back down a little bit smaller here I'm going to drop it right over here. And let's say with BB-8 we have a number of different versions of this Illustrator file. In fact, it's not that I have more versions of the Illustrator file. I just have files that I want to replace BB-8 with. One of the things I can do is simply right-click on the smart object and choose to replace the contents. Now, ideally, the contents are going to be both the same size and the same resolution. Let's say 72 DPI or something like that. That way, they seamlessly replace. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this Illustrator file with a sort of an exported PNG that is a different color. So I'm going to right-click and choose Replace Contents. I'm going to navigate to my desktop, and I'm going to choose, let's go with BB-8 Red and see what happens here. 
and you can see it places it now. It's much larger than it was, but it places it where it was. Let's try scaling this guy down a little bit. Maybe make him, I don't know, 65% of the size that he was. All right, like that. And when we decide we want to replace these contents, we can right click, choose replace contents. Now remember, let me just explain this. If we bring up free transform, a, a transform reducing this to 65% of the original width and height is being applied to the smart object container. So if we right click and choose replace contents with another large BB-8 version, and this, this teal one is just as big, watch what happens. It ensures that because the size of the PNG, the bit depth, everything is the same, it automatically is also scaled down to that 65% width and height, which can be incredibly useful. And one of the other things that's really, really cool is you can actually duplicate this layer. Now, you can right click and choose new smart object via copy. That creates an entirely new smart object. We can create a new instance of this smart object by hitting Commander Control J, just duplicating that layer, right? Let's say we put a second BB 8 out here. And actually, let's scale this BB 8 down even a little bit more. Maybe put him right here on her shoulder, or right around her shoulder. And then we decide, you know what, or the client decides, I don't like teal BB-8, I want a yellow BB-8. Well, we can just right click on one of the smart objects, choose replace contents. Hey, look, we got BB-8 yellow. Go ahead and place that. And both of the BB-8s are automatically replaced. And the sizes, uh, the, the transform is a, a function or a, a, tra a transform, really, that's what it is, is a transform that's being added to the smart object. So any smart object that is added to the smart object or replaces this smart object, the contents get replaced and not the actual container. The smart object is the container that contains some artwork. If we fill artwork into this smaller BB-8 yellow, well, the instance of it that's here is going to be scaled down to 30% of its original size. So just keep that in mind when you're working with smart objects. So working with Adobe Illustrator files and being able to replace those contents even is super helpful. And that idea of replacing contents is my number three favorite thing about smart objects. Now, we can also update multiple smart objects across a couple Photoshop or even more. I only have two open here, but across multiple Photoshop documents. Here's how it works. If you just go to your finder and drag any PSD into another Photoshop document, it will automatically be created uh, or converted, excuse me, to a smart object. That's not what we want. We very specifically and deliberately want to go file, place, linked, not embedded, linked. By placing a linked file, we establish a connection between that file that we're dropping into this image and like we're going to link to this PSD file. So we're going to link this PSD file into this image and we're going to link that same PSD file into this image. What that means is if we change this PSD file, well guess what? It's going to change in two documents at once. So here's how it works. File, place linked and we're going to go right here to the thiswaterlogo.psd and hit place. When we place it, I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. Maybe I'll place it over here sort of in the bottom uh, right hand corner just like so. I'll go over to my second document and again I'm going to go file, place linked and I'm going to choose that same thiswaterlogo.psd and again I'll place it down in that bottom corner. Again, if we were working on a real project, we would make sure it's in the exact same spot relative to the corner and all that fancy stuff. But let's say we present this to the client. They're like, oh, we love it. It's so great. But can we change the color of the word water? Instead of it being blue, let's make it pink or something. Well, what we can do is we can double click on this thumbnail and it's going to open that PSD file. We'll just do this a quick and dirty way with the hue saturation adjustment layer. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, the hue slider and I'm going to pull it all the way over here. So the word water is in fact pink. Then I will commit that change by saving the PSD file. I can close the PSD and we can see there this water pink. And then over here in this document, it's also pink. So just imagine if you're working on a client's letterhead and website design and, you know, a bunch of different things, business card, you've got them all scattered through Photoshop and even many of the creative cloud applications. You can link these PSDs and other bits of artwork into your different documents. So when you update sort of that master PSD, everything across all of your different documents will automatically update. So when a client asks for a change like this, you don't have to say, oh, I can do that, but it's going to take hours because I have to go and update every single file. Well, this makes it a little 30 second change. You can open one file, edit one file, and everything will automatically update across the board. That is a beautiful and very, very powerful feature. Now, last but not least, one of the things that I love, just as like a little thing that Smart Objects allows you to do, you can go layer, Smart Objects, and just choose 
to re reveal in Finder and, and on, on the Windows machine, this would be reveal in Explorer. And all that does is it opens up your Finder window and just shows you where that file is hanging out on your hard drive. And this can just be super useful if you have one big common area where you store a lot of assets, or maybe you drag something over from a different project and you, you forgot to move it to this new projects folder, uh, or any number of things. I've just found that is super helpful, and I like to keep all of my stuff very well organized. So a lot of times I'll say, ah, you know, where is that linked smart object? Or even just where's that piece of artwork that's maybe embedded? Where did it come from on my hard drive? And I'll go and reveal and find it. Particularly, it's helpful, obviously, with linked stuff that you're going to be going and editing uh, later on. So that can be very, very, very helpful uh, down the road. So there we have it. The ability to lock in size and scale up, the ability to drag in and work with Adobe Illustrator files that preserve their vectorness, the idea that you can replace the contents of a smart object is amazing, updating multiple smart objects across multiple Photoshop documents, and last but not least, being able to reveal in Finder or Explorer for Windows are five things that I absolutely love about smart objects in Photoshop, and I hope you love them too. So for smart objects and the things that I love about them in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. How you doing? Want to do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that little like button. Yeah, crush it. Smash it. That's right. After that, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe. Hit the little red button there. If you've already done it, great. We're good then, right? Huh? Of course, after you do that, you got to head over to tutvid.com and sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up, get a little something for it, you know? You're going to get a little uh, guide full of uh, time-saving tips and tricks on how you can use Photoshop and save a lot of time in that application. Of course, go find me on social media too. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. All the links down there in the description. Do it. Or you might be sleeping with the fishes.